Welcome to the Work Camper Show, brought to you by WorkCamper.com. This podcast helps you discover how to finance your RV travel dreams. Each one of our episodes will introduce you to people who are already living the RV lifestyle or to work camping opportunities all around the U.S. You'll also learn how to hit the road the right way and make the most of every opportunity. Now let's turn over today's show to your host, Greg Gerber. Today I'm interviewing a couple of adventure bandits who've been RVing for several years and actually enjoyed an opportunity to compete in the upcoming season of RV Unplugged. Today's episode is sponsored by Work Camper News. If you have more questions and answers when it comes to the RVing and work camping lifestyle, then don't worry, Work Camper News has your back. Attend a free monthly Q&A webinar to get your questions answered. Each month, the knowledgeable team behind WorkCamper.com hosts a free live webinar where they answer questions submitted by folks just like you who are learning about the RV lifestyle, just getting started, or been work camping for a while. They cover topics like what kind of work camping jobs are available, what do those jobs pay, tips for writing a work camper resume, questions to ask an employer, what type of RV is best, how to get your mail as an RVer, and much more. In the description of each video, you'll find the list of questions that were answered so you can quickly jump to the sections you want to hear. Register for the next live webinar at workcamper.com forward slash answers, or listen to detailed answers now by watching past recordings of Q&A webinars on the Work Camper News YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash workcamper and click on the Q&A on Work Camping playlist. Talmanch and Ashante Grace have been RVing together for more than nine years after realizing camping in a tent wasn't much fun, especially in the rain. In fact, Ashante had been RVing since she was a child living in Alaska before she moved to Ohio where she met Talmadge. For the past two years, the couple has been RVing in a 32-foot travel trailer. They got into the lifestyle after seeing their friends enjoying a lot of comforts like a stove, refrigerator, bathrooms, and the ability to stay dry when it rains. Ashante works at a remote job, and Talmadge runs his own business. They take their RV on extended trips where they combine work with play. To tell us how they got into the RV lifestyle and what they do to help others enjoy better experiences and how they wound up as contestants in Season 2 of RV Unplugged, please welcome Talmadge and Ashante Grace, the founders of Adventure Bandits, to the show. Thanks for joining me today, Talmadge and Ashante. I really appreciate the time. Tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from and how long you've been RVing. For me, I've been RVing since I was a little girl. So I used to live in Alaska and then I moved to Ohio and that's where I met my husband. I've been RVing for, I want to say about nine years now. Before we started RVing, we was camping. We had a bad flood one night, it rained hard one night and it was a, a flood in our tent got flooded and everything. And so after that, we said, we got to get RV if we're going to continue to camp. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, That's not not fun to wake up in the middle of a a rainstorm and have your tent and all of your belongings soaking wet. Yes, (laughs) you're right. So what kind of RV do you have? Right now we have a a Highland Ridge open range 322 RLS. We had it now for two years now. The rig that we had before this, it was an open range as well, it's the same exact model. But the thing about what happened with that is a tree fell on it. Oh. So, yes, yeah, so we replaced it with the exact same unit. Well, so it goes to show you we bought correctly the first time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you wouldn't have that kind of luck with a tent. Right. Actually, it was a freak storm. And it was a tree that the parks were going to cut down. Uh, and they didn't cut it down in time oh yeah and when the storm came through that's when it fell on us but the good thing about it was no one was hurt and we were out of the rv three minutes prior to it hitting our camper wow that's a good fortune yes (laughs) why did you pick a travel trailer i would let my husband answer that one (laughs) we probably didn't go with a fifth wheel because we would lose the bed space on our truck and we like taking our toys around. We like bringing kayaks with us. We like bringing our electric bikes. We like bringing, we got some like electric choppers that we like bringing. And we knew that a fifth wheel would take the bed and we wouldn't have no way to bring it unless we um, drive another vehicle. So mm-hmm. that's why we went with a travel trailer instead. 
Okay. You tow a boat with you when you tra- are, are, are being at um, home? Uh, yes. Um, I have a, um, no, I, right now we're driving a, um, F-350, um, Ford truck. And we also have a 2012 Chevy van that we tow our boat with. Okay. So both of so, you are driving? Yes, we are. Okay. She followed me in the boat. That makes sense. Towing the boat. <laughs> towing the boat, not in a boat. Right. <laughs> yes, towing the boat. <laughs> Super. What attracted you to the RV lifestyle? You've been camping for a long time. Yes, we had some friends. We always used to do stuff together. Used to go to like different concerts. A lot of the concerts require you to stay overnight. It was like a weekend concert where we had to tent camp. So one of our friends went and got an RV because they got tired of tent camping. <laughs> and after going to the RV and noticing like, wow, they got a refrigerator, they got a stove. They got even ate their own bathroom. <laughs> and so we was like, wow, we need to get, we need to get an RV. So our very first unit was a fixer upper. We bought it for, I want to say about 1600 and we ended up total re the whole entire RV. It was a used RV. We total re it. By the time we sold the RV, which was only a year later, we actually sold it for three times what we got it for. I believe we sold it for about six or seven thousand. That's nice. Also, yes. Yep. Also, with come when you're camping is the great, amazing people that you meet and the beautiful scenic things that you see while traveling, the different cities and states that you get to visit. It was something that we fell in love with because you were experiencing new things, but you were able to stay in your rig while visiting a certain area. And once we had started doing that, it was more of a weekend thing. Once we started doing that, we just fell in love with it. Now it's more like we're on the road probably around 51 weeks out of the year. Wow. Are you working yes. from the road? Yes. Actually, I get to remote, do remote work while in my rig. We have Starlink, so we make sure that we have the means to stay connected to the internet. I also use my hotspot on my phone. My husband has a different network provider so that in the event I can't work off of Verizon, he has a T-Mobile. And if we can't use either one, then we always have Starlink as well. So that has been working out and it has allowed us to just really enjoy life now instead of waiting to retire. That's a brilliant plan for a couple to each have separate uh, cell phone providers to ensure that you've got that constant connection. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I understand that you've started an online community and an actual physical community of other RVers, people who are interested in the lifestyle. Talk about that a little bit. As far as our YouTube channel, uh, we have a YouTube channel. We also have a Facebook channel. And then with our YouTube channel, we actually want to show people because when, when we first got into RVN, we noticed that a lot of people that was RVN, they was more like full-time RVers. And at the time, we was not full-timers. We just weekend warriors. So we want to show that that weekend warrior type of RV and where we go out weekly, we go to different parks, different campgrounds and and experience whatever they have to offer there. So we started putting that up on YouTube and we started talking about weekend warriors and that's how our channel started going. And from there, we started a Facebook page and I guess people start uh, searching us and finding us and start um, joining our Facebook groups. And from there, everything just started growing. But our name for our our channel, it's called Adventure Bandits. I love that name. Thank you so much. We call ourselves the Adventure Bandits because at that time he has his own business. And then I was working full time in the office. So what we would do in order to be able to stay out on the road longer, when it came to holidays, we would add a day or two on the front end and a day or two on the back end. And that way we were able to extend our time. So we were basically um, stealing moments and time to have our adventures. So that's why we call ourselves the Adventure Bandits. That's a great scheduling ploy as well, to take that extra time on the beginning and the end to 
just to, if you're going somewhere, just to have some fun. I really like that. Thank you. Thank you. And then our community that we so love is it, it's a spinoff from our channel. We've met so many people that says, we wish we could camp with you or when you're in our area, check us out. We would love to camp with you. And we found ourselves going to so many different places, but we had a bright idea by saying, why not throw an event? It's almost something like a rally, but it's not. And we're going to call it the glamp out because of course, everybody loves glamping, right? Yes. <laughs> So our glamp outs are at certain parks. They do not always have to be at resorts. What we have found is that everyone loves a concrete pad and they love full hookups. And some don't mind it at all. But a lot of times when we throw our glamp outs, we offer that so that everyone will be definitely comfortable during their stay for the three days or four days. And we bring in bands. We'll bring in a jazz player. Sometimes we'll bring in other people to help us so that we can have cornhole competitions. Um, our team will also um, be experienced in painting. So we'll have a sip and paint. We'll also have a DJ. If we're close to any water at all, we'll always throw in an, an excursion such as a boat ride or something like that. It makes it really unique to stay at a park that can offer all of that stuff, but there's a lot of parks that don't offer it. So what we do is we bring the entertainment, the fun, and the community all together, and we all just have a great time with like-minded individuals, and we just network, and we come out with friends out of this and other friends that continue to camp from our event. And we also get to take some of the proceeds that we make from the glamp out. And we then seek out a local charity where we can give them some monetary money uh, for their shelter to help out with vets or with women and children. Or we'll also add in a food drive where we're able to donate canned goods as well. That's a wonderful idea. I wish more people would do that at their rallies. Thank you. Thank you. We get a lot of enjoyment. But I can imagine. How often do you do that every year? We do the glamp out once a year. And we also add in additional bashes. They're called the Venture Bandit Bashes. And right now we will average two a year, but we're working up to trying to at least do four a year along with our glamp out. I looked on YouTube and you folks have 43,000 subscribers. That's quite a community. Yes. How long have you had your channel? We had it now for uh, four years now. Okay. And what kind of content yeah, so, do you specialize in or do you try to promote on that channel? It's all about RVing. It's all about going to different parks and showing how the park look. We, we usually do like a review of the park and also show the things that you can do there. And we pretty much show our lifestyle. Um, as far as us camping here, and yeah, we, we, we try to do a lot of education, teach people as far as, um, things and, um, as, and show that we, we like to show the good and the bad side of RV here because it is not always good. Sometimes you, you, you have issues with your RV. Like one time there was a, a storm that a freak storm that came through another storm came through and someone's tent. I uh, got lifted up off the ground. Big canopy got lifted up the ground and bust out our window. So we show <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. We show stuff like that, that this stuff happens at these parks. And we, 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 we like to go around. Like we, we've been a little everywhere uh, as far as the East Coast so far. And we want to venture out to the West Coast as well. I noticed but, that one of the videos that you posted was titled, What Were We Thinking? about Everglades boondocking in the oh, Everglades. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the reason why, because we, we're not used to boondocking. And and out of all places we picked the boondocks, it wasn't in the Everglades. And there, you got to keep your RV air conditioned uh, for the mosquitoes won't come in. Mm -hmm. But we're getting bit all night and during the day. 
<laughs> like mosquito, girl. You're like, wow, this is. And the thing about it, though, we had to stay there. We stayed there a whole week, so we had to experience that every single day, getting bit and bugs everywhere. So that was an experience. But I, it was definitely a beautiful park. So I yes, definitely yes. highly recommend it. Just bring a lot of protection, <laughs> some debt or deep. <laughs> that's right. I don't know which is worse, the mosquitoes in Florida or the mosquitoes in Minnesota, but they can take away small animals if they want. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's absolutely we In Florida, you got to deal with mosquitoes and no stems. That's right, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, you, along, along with the alligators. <laughs> oh, that's exactly right, yes. You folks are contestants on season two of RV Unplugged. How did you get involved in that? Actually, they reached out to us. I, I think well, it was actually Phil and Stacy from Today is Sunday. They was down in the Keys and they watched one of our Keys. I, I guess they wanted to find out about the area and they watched one of our videos from the Keys. And I, I guess um, Stacy like, wow, these are good people. And she reached out and asked us, would we be interested in participating? or being contested on the um, RV. And I would have to say it was definitely an honor and a great experience for us. Uh, I, I would have to say, if anyone has not seen season one, I would say go look at season one. And with season two coming up, definitely no, it is probably six times more exciting. <laughs> really? Why is that? <laughs> yeah. I would just say they really did a great job of making sure that you had an adventure and it didn't matter how old you were, which is another good thing. So a lot of people say, oh, I can't do RV Unplugged. I'm too old. There's no such thing. You could do RV Unplugged if you're okay with having an adventure. And who doesn't like an adventure, right? Exactly. Now, you can't talk about any of the results. Can you talk about some of the things that you did on the show? I can say I was, I because I, then it would lead into kind of what I did. Okay. But I would say that I was definitely, with me being my age, I'm 53 years old, I was definitely taken back on how you build a relationship with the other contestants that okay. you're competing with. Okay. And you feel like you now have an extended family that you bonded with in such a short time, but yet you are supposed to be competing against them for $25,000. So, but I, I would have to say we came out with uh, numerous friends and I personally faced one of my fears. So, and one of my fears is water. Okay. Anything to do with water is a fear because I was never properly taught how to swim. But that was something that I got to face head on. And I would have to say, due to the show, now I'm open to getting formal training and swimming and getting into, even though we have a boat, I will jump on the lily pad with my life vest on. But now it, there's other things you can do in the water that are definitely adventurous. And that's how I would say that. <laughs> uh, that's a very good explanation. You guys tow a boat with you wherever you go. So to be afraid of the water is weird. Absolutely. <laughs> what kinds of things do you do with your boat? So we have a pontoon. So we like to, it's a 90 horsepower power, and we like to visit certain lakes where you, they have different restaurants on the Ooh. lake. Or we also love fishing. So that's another thing that I feel like the camping community does all the time when they're out there. It's definitely enjoying the sights while you're on the lake or the water and fishing. We're, we do more leisure things on the boat versus um, getting in uh, far as water activities. Uh, we, we pretty much hang out on the boat, laugh and talk with other people. And like she said, um, go to different a lot of the um, lakes in Ohio have some restaurants and things on the lake where you can pull, you can dock right up to the um, to the restaurant and they come out and serve you on your boat. Or we also have what you call a, um, a lily pad also. If you're going to get in the water, we, we'll put the lily pad out because the lily pad actually floats on top of the water and we'll lay on the lily pad and it's on a hot sunny day as well. 
I've never heard of one of those. That sounds like yeah. an interesting kind of uh, toy that you could bring with you. It reminds me like you're um, like the frog. You look at a frog when they be in the lake, they be on those little lily pads. Right. So they got something. Yeah, they got something just like that. It's called the lily pad where it sits on top of the water. Um, and water is actually on it, but it, it don't. It don't submerge in the water. It just sits on top of the water, and you can still get, stay cool by just sitting on the lily pad. Is that an inflatable thing that you blow up before you put it on the water? No, it's not inflatable at all. It's just actually, it rolls up. You roll it up, and you roll it out. It, 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 it's something like a foam pad. Interesting. I'll yeah. have to check that yeah. out. Yes. So yeah. we, we use that. We don't do a lot of water activity unless we pull in like our grandkids. We do have like an inner tube that we pull them around the lake on. And that's pretty, pretty much it. How many grandkids do you folks have? Ten total. We are a blended family. I got one. Uh, the rest of them belong to my wife. <laughs> she put them all on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. What are some of your favorite places that you visited? I will have to say... um Anchor Down, which is located in Dandrick, Dandrick, um, Tennessee, Carolina Pies, which is Conway, South Carolina. But now it's called Sun Myrtle. Yes, yeah, it's called um, Sun Outdoor Myrtle Beach now. Where else? Margaritaville, which is what, Arbondale, Florida. That's actually in Florida where we're at now. Also, we have gone to a lot of state parks in Ohio that we really love, such as Atwood Lake Campground. And that's in Mineral City, Ohio. Yeah, I went. We throw up a lot of our events at. Yeah, and it's where we use that location to throw a lot of our glamp out events as well. We go to a lot of resorts, but we also love, love, love the state Thanks, parks as well. If you had to start over again, is there anything that you would do differently? I would have gotten into camping sooner. We we spend a lot of money going to different countries and staying at their resorts. I would have, I wish we would have done this a lot sooner. And I wish we would have been able to enjoy this with our kids when they were a lot younger. Now our kids, they're adults and our grandkids love the camping part of it. So I wish we would have been able to also have them start at a young age. I believe that when you introduce a young kid to camping, either they're going to love it or they're going to hate it. But a lot of times when my mom and dad, when we were in Alaska, when they took me camping, I loved it. So it was really quick and it was very easy for me to get back into it where I wish I would have as well. So we're starting off with the grandkids and hopefully they will continue the family tradition. That's one of the things. And also just making sure that if I could do something all over again, try to go visit not the same city and state, but always have a goal to add on an additional state so that you can at least say, God forbid, before anything happens, that you've at least seen this great country that we live in. I would agree with that. Are there any places that are still on your bucket list? Yes. Wyoming, New Mexico. We have not been to either one of those. Arizona, the Dakotas. We hear a lot about, a lot of people tell us about Colorado as well. Yeah. Right? Be able to camp in Colorado because it's just so beautiful and breathtaking. Definitely have some more states on our list for sure. So we'll expect to see you out here in Arizona sometime this year. I, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Talmud, you said that you ran a business. Do you want to talk about that? Yes. Actually, I ran a flooring business for over 25 years. I still have it. But what I tend to do now is I take the winners off. I take the winter off when we become snowbirds, just like we're doing now over the winter month. But the, with the flooring business, business. I specialize in carpet, vinyl, VCT, ceramic tile. I pretty much can install anything. And I, what I would do is also I was contract my labor out to Home Depot. We have an account with Home Depot where I work for Home Depot, work for some of the flooring companies as well as, as a contractor. Okay. So, so now that we're in Florida right now during the winter months, I actually 
I taught my cousin, I taught a, a couple more guys throughout the years. So what I would do is when someone called me for flooring, give them the lead and actually make money, tell them how much money to price it out at. That's how I make my money as well. Okay. So you're connecting other customers to other contractors. Yes, I am. Okay. That's a great business. So you work really hard all summer long and then kick back in the winter. That's a great plan. Yes, I, yes, I do. <laughs> do you have any advice for people who are either considering becoming work campers or who are thinking about joining the RV lifestyle? I would say do it. If you can do it according to your budget, get into it and definitely enjoy every minute of it. You're going to meet so many great people. You're going to build a community that's going to be new to you. It's definitely different from sitting on your porch. <laughs> and, and if you're able to find work while you're out, that is another experience. Just being able to travel and also work at the same time, I always say it's a blessing. So if, if this is something that you're interested in, and if it's something that your spouse is also willing to do, and your children, if you have them, you're exposing them to things that they would never, ever get to see mm -hmm. stationed in one place. But you're also giving them an experience that they would cherish for a lifetime. If you don't have children, and if it's just you and your spouse, then you're able to build fond memories together and you're able to explore a world that is just so beautiful and breathtaking. And if it's just you, there are solo travelers out there in their rigs and they are just having the best time as well. So do it. <laughs> That's what I would like to say. That's great advice. How can people connect with you if they'd like to follow you on some of your social media channels or just to ask you a question? Yes. Yeah, so they can email us and we respond all the time. And the email address is adventure bandits, the number one at gmail.com. We also have a YouTube channel that is adventure bandits. We have Facebook and we also have two Instagram pages. It's a his and her type of thing. So one is Talmud is IG and the other one is my IG. And the reason, yeah, but they're both under Adventure Bandits. And the reason why we did that is because there's things that he would like to showcase in the RV community. And then there's things that I would like to showcase. So that's how we can both express ourselves. I love it. That's great. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck in all of your travels this year. Thank you so much. And for those that are watching RV Unplugged Season 2, please root on your adventure bandits too. Good idea. Thank you again. All right. Thank you. I enjoyed interviewing Talmadge and Ashante Grace today. The founders of Adventure Bandits, they have a lot of experience as part-time work campers. They offered a great suggestion by encouraging couples to have cell phones connected to separate service providers. That way, if a Verizon connection doesn't work in one area, a T-Mobile connection usually does. The couple also relies on Starlink to provide internet access wherever they travel. To support their travels, Talmadge and Ashante have set up a YouTube channel to teach weekend warriors how to get started in the RV lifestyle. That channel has more than 41,300 subscribers. They also started a Facebook community that has now grown to more than 5,200 members. The couple meets with followers at annual glamp outs that includes bands or a jazz player plus planned excursions in addition to raising money or providing service to charitable organizations. Talmadge and Ashante also host up to four Adventure Bandit Bashes annually to connect with their fans. They have produced several hundred videos which show people the good and bad side of our being, as well as recommend products to use and places to visit. The couple also tows a boat with them wherever they travel, which adds a new dimension to their videos. 
They'll be making their first appearance in the upcoming season of RV Unplugged starting May 29th and would really appreciate support from their fans. People can connect with Talmadge and Ashante through their website at www.adventurebandits.net or on Facebook. People can also email them at adventurebandits1 at gmail.com and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Today's episode is sponsored by WorkCamper News. With its diamond and platinum membership tools, WorkCamper News is much more than just a job listing website. When you put the tools of this professional service into action, you'll find out just how easy it can be to turn your work camping dreams into reality. The one-year memberships open the door to a one-stop shop for all things work camping. Being the original resource for work camping, you find the largest number of job listings, be able to connect with the community of work campers, and view resources compiled by experts who've been enjoying the RV lifestyle for many years. If you're serious about leading a successful and enjoyable work camping lifestyle, then a Diamond or Platinum membership is for you. You can even get started with a free 30-day trial by visiting www.workcamper.com forward slash trial. Embark on new adventures today with the support of Work Camper News behind you. That's all I have for this week's show. Next time we'll be talking with two employees of the Girl Camper Organization about the work they do to help women get started in the RV lifestyle the right way and to develop strong friendships as well. I'll have that interview on the next episode of The Work Camper Show. Thanks for listening.